Good Monday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to today's top news stories, let's, as we always do, take a quick look outside our weather window. <laughs> wow, what a day today with all kinds of bright blue sunshine out there as we look down at the beautiful Wenatchee Valley from our uh, SkyFi Tower camera at Wenatchee Heights, the cross camera. A little bit of wind out there, though, and you can see the ripples in the Columbia River down in the middle part of your screen and other cameras that we checked out. It was blowing pretty good, but all in all, a pretty darn nice winter day. And talk about nice, the rest of this week and right into the upcoming weekend looked really nice here in North Central Washington. What we're seeing today is pretty much what we're gonna get for the rest of this week. That means Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, maybe a few more clouds Friday and then into Saturday with just a slight chance for some a weak shower activity overnight on Saturday. And folks, that is about it. We're gonna warm up too. We'll talk more about that coming up a little bit later on. And now a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. A man wanted for second degree attempted murder led Okanagan Sheriff's deputies on a wild car and foot chase through Oroville Saturday afternoon before eventually being arrested. The father of Wenatchee toddler who died from abuse says he'll file a wrongful death lawsuit in the case. And the man arrested in a stabbing last week outside the Wenatchee Safeway store is accused of violating a domestic violence protective order in the process. But first we begin tonight. A spark from a recreational fire pit ignited a debris pile Sunday afternoon in Mansfield that briefly threatened nearby structures and homes. Douglas County Fire District 5 firefighters, however, were able able to stop the spread of the fire before it did any serious damage. The district said about 1.30 p.m. in the 10 block of Wall Avenue, high winds blew embers from the fire pit into that debris pile. The district warns residents to make sure all recreational fires are completely extinguished and cold to the touch before leaving them. Well, a man wanted for second degree attempted murder led Okanagan Sheriff's deputies on a wild car and foot chase through Oroville Saturday afternoon before eventually being arrested. The Sheriff's Office says 29-year-old Sean Dahlquist struck 22-year-old Bradley Keener with the propane tank, then cut his face with a knife at a residence on Juniper Road. Dahlquist reportedly had gone to the home after being called by Keener's girlfriend, who said she and Keener were having a disagreement. After the altercation, Keener fled to a residence on Balms Road, where someone at that house called 911. That started a search for Dahlquist, who was spotted driving on North Main Street in Oroville. A chase through town ensued at speeds of up to 70 miles per hour before Dahlquist jumped out of the moving vehicle on South Main Street. A deputy gave chase on foot and caught Dahlquist after the uh, suspect tripped while trying to enter an apartment. Keener, meanwhile, was treated for his injuries at North Valley Hospital in Tenasket. Well, the father of a, a Wenatchee Valley toddler who died from abuse says he'll file a wrongful death lawsuit in that case. Two-year-old Rustin Atkerson died in Seattle Children's Hospital in 2017, two months after a severe brain injury. His mother, Elaine Hurd, pleaded guilty to felony mistreatment of a child last year, but denied causing Rustin's injury. The boy's father, Ian Atkerson, started proceedings last month in Chelange County Court to be appointed personal representative representative of the child's estate. If a judge grants his request at a hearing next week, he says he'll file a civil lawsuit to collect damages for Rustin's death. Rustin's parents were separated and his mother had primary custody at the time he was fatally injured. Well, the man arrested in a stabbing last week outside the Wenatchee Safeway store is accused of violating a domestic violence protective order in the process. Adam Dale Ellis Jr. allegedly stabbed a male victim in the leg during a struggle in the parking lot Tuesday night. Wenatchee police say the victim was walking with Ellis's former partner who held a protective order against Ellis because of past domestic abuse. Ellis, who's 31, has three prior domestic violence convictions. He remains jailed on pending charges, including first degree assault. Coming up next, the 2020 race for State House of Representatives could be a hot one in the 12th District. It's official, Mission Ridge Ski and Board Resort is moving ahead with plans to develop a ski village around its downhill slopes. 8th District Congresswoman Kim Schreier made her latest town hall appearance in Wenatchee on Friday night. And I'm Grant Olson. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News.
Coming home should never be a chore. Let Merry Maids of Wenatchee customize all your cleaning needs. Weekly, bi-weekly, special occasion. Do you have a vacation home that needs cleaning? We clean them too. Locally owned and operated, let Merry Maids do the cleaning while you focus on your family and friends. Merry Maids has special offers to fit your budget. Request your free cleaning estimate today. 509-663-1710. Are you like many who are lacking in their retirement plan but are skeptical to talk to an advisor? Are you concerned about where you should put your money or who to trust? At Solomon Financial, we are more about the people we serve than policies or products. We are a fee-based fiduciary with the mission of giving you the peace of mind so you can live the retirement of your dreams. If you have any of these questions or concerns, we'd welcome you to come see us. Winter is a great time to trade in your current hot tub. Turn your old hot tub into money with Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa's trade-in program. And with Blue Lagoon's home show pricing, you can save $500 to $1,000 off of any new artesian spa or take advantage of a free Bluetooth music experience. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa recommends draining your hot tub every three months. Ask us about our drain and refill special for only $99. Stop on by Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa today. Welcome back. In another news, the 2020 race for State House of Representatives could be a hot one right here in the 12th District. Dr. Ann Diamond, the Medhow Valley physician who lost to Representative Keith Gaynor in 2018, plans a campaign launch February 29th at the Wenatchee Public Library. Diamond says she'll be campaigning for the seat Gaynor now holds. Diamond's last run as an independent candidate. Gaynor is a longtime Republican. Well, it's official. Mission Ridge Ski and Board Resort is moving ahead with plans to develop a ski village around its downhill slopes. Chelan County says it's received Mission's application to build 621 condominium units, 275 single-family homes, and 110,000 square feet of commercial space, all to be phased in over the next 20 years. The application starts a 30-day public comment period in which residents can review the plans and make their thoughts known to the Chelan County Community Development Office. You can view those plans on Chelan County's website. The comment period ends at 5 p.m. on March 30th. 8th District Congresswoman Kim Schreier made her latest town hall appearance in Wenatchee on Friday night. She made multiple stops along the way, including a lunchtime appearance at the Leavenworth Rotary, where she's answered an array of questions on health care, partisanship, and the Central Washington farm economy. And then in particular, I wanted to thank you for Rotary's commitment to eradicating polio around the world because as a pediatrician who gives those polio vaccines many times every day, um, at least I did when I was in the office, um, I really I really appreciate that and uh, have been hard at work on increasing vaccination rates nationally. Um, and then co-sponsored legislation to create a public option. Um, I think that is a great way to allow people to have an affordable way forward, especially um, now you have more, but previously you only have one insurance provider here. And that means there's a monopoly and it means prices are gonna go up. So this is something that will compete with private insurance and bring costs down. We passed a groundbreaking bill to bring down the cost of prescription drugs, and I have my fingers crossed that this will get through the Senate and get signed by the President because it does really, really important things, like finally giving Medicare the power to negotiate the cost of prescription drugs. Because to me, it seems absolutely insane that the biggest purchaser of medications in the world can't negotiate price and yet has to cover every single FDA-approved drug. That makes no sense. And then we end up paying three to four times on average what the rest of the world pays. And you can think, I'm sure in your own lives, of plenty of examples of how we're getting gouged. You know I'm not gonna answer that question. No, I am keeping, as they say in Congress, I'm keeping my powder dry. And ultimately, whoever uh, my party chooses as the nominee, I will wholeheartedly support. 
You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Stay with us. AC Checker has new owners who put customer service first. When you have to get there on time, call fast, friendly, reliable AC Checker, 663-TAXI. AC Checker has the industry's only on-time or it's free guarantee. Conditions apply. Call AC Checker, 663-TAXI to schedule your cab or schedule online at acchecker.com. Call American Classic Taxi, 663-TAXI. That's 663-8294. You want to help others. You need a solid career. You can have both with help from Charter College. Our 10-month medical assistant program prepares you to work in healthcare settings like physician offices, rehab centers, and clinics. You'll learn to take vitals, assist with exams, administer injections, and maintain records. When you're ready to launch a rewarding healthcare career, stop by our campus at 595 Grant Road across from Safeway or visit chartercollege.edu. It's estimated that one-third of Americans do not have a financial plan. At DA Davidson, their advisors are working to change that because they understand the importance of planning for the future. At DA Davidson, they believe in partnering together to build a strategy tailored to your needs. They spend the time and have the knowledge to help keep your financial future on track. Let DA Davidson Financial Advisors of Wenatchee put the strength of advice to work for you. And welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. A Bridgeport area road remains closed until further notice due to extremely unstable slope conditions. The Zellum Hill Road was built in the 1880s along a steep hillside in the Bridgeport area. It serves about a dozen homes. In tonight's feature story, Douglas County Commissioners say maintaining the unpaved road as a secondary access for those residents has been a long time struggle. Commissioners also say a portion of the Zellum Road is completely collapsed, leaving a huge chasm that slices the road in half. The roadbed is uh, I would best characterize it by saying it's probably slumped a good uh, six to eight feet below the, uh, the other areas. And so it is certainly not passable by car. Uh, and we continue to try to make it passable by way of walking so that folks can park a car on either side and be able to uh, get to and from uh, Bridgeport that way. Um, it is certainly of concern. We are looking at uh, continuing to explore long-term solutions uh, for the road itself. Um, it's certainly an issue uh, that uh, as is concerned for us, particularly the safety of the individuals up there. And we're definitely uh, sensitive to the fact that this is, um, and for a lot of those folks, represents a, a huge uh, shift in the way that they get to and from work and other services in that area. Commissioners spent over $300,000 last year in a favor failed effort to stabilize that slope. They say DeZellum Hill Road may ultimately have to be closed permanently. Time now for a check of your North Central Washington weather forecast. And as always, before we get to all those details, let's take a peek outside our weather window and look at the beautiful shot from this afternoon. Just all kinds of beautiful blue sky out there. We did see some windy conditions at times, about 10 to 20 miles here in the, miles per hour here in the Wenatchee area. A little bit stronger winds in other portions of our area. Another beautiful shot. Let's go up to Blewett Pass. How about that? I think this is, here's Highway 97 and Blewett Pass, and I think it's around the Swak campground area, but what a beautiful day up that way too. Just a few high clouds above the Cascades. A beautiful day to be traveling over beautiful Blewett Pass. High temperatures today got very nice, just like yesterday. Unofficially 48 degrees at Pangborn Airport. 45 is now our normal high temperature. 33 is where we started our day. That's a little bit above where we should be as far as low temperatures go. 29 is normal. 59 
about that? Record high set back in 1991, and our record low temperature was set in 1993 at 13 degrees. We did pick up two one hundredths of an inch of moisture. That was from that brief heavy downpour yesterday morning. That now gets us to 1.21 inches for the year, which is about a half inch below where we should be as far as moisture goes here in the Wenatchee area. Sunrise 651, and the sun will set this afternoon at 538. Let's take a peek at how your Tuesday shapes up. A lot like today. In fact, temperatures about exactly like today. Moses Lake 48, 47 for Afreda, 46 for Wenatchee and Quincy. And keep in mind, that's below where we were today, but that's where we should have been today. So I'm still thinking mid 40s for us here in the Wenatchee Valley, a little bit warmer to our east, and then mid 40s all the way up into a Chelan, Eniat, and you folks up in OMAC. Let's take a look at that surface loop now, and tonight we can expect partly cloudy skies, just a northwest breeze tonight. It should drop down to about 5 to 10 miles an hour. Here's our next storm system, low pressure winding up off the Pacific coast, and our frontal system associated with that. We have so much high pressure right here in the western U.S. It's centered in southern Wyoming. It's keeping everything at bay, so all the storm systems that are trying to move our direction are really being shielded by this big dome of high pressure, and that means lots of sunshine as we get into Wednesday, too. We'll call it partly cloudy, but a little bit warmer. These yellow areas, that is 60 degree temperatures, and we can see that as early as Wednesday down in the Tri-Cities area. We're going to be flir flirting with that here as well as we get into the late part of the week. More widespread 50s and about 60 degrees. Spokane 57 on Friday. Unseasonably warm as we get into the end of the week. An area of low pressure is pushing down, though, from the northwest. It will kind of squeeze into our ridge, and that'll bring us a few more clouds late in the day on Friday and especially increasing clouds on Saturday. You can see some snow showers in the Cascades, also some snow to our east. So we may catch a shower or two. This will be overnight Saturday into Sunday morning and only a 20% chance if we do see anything. And then Sunday, March 1st. Can you believe that? It looks like a great start uh, to our March. It'll come in like a lamb with mostly sunny skies and still mild with high temperatures predominantly here in north central Washington between 50 and 60 degrees. Let's take a look now at your Patriot Plumbing, Heating and Cooling 7-day forecast. Right where we should be for overnight lows tonight at 28 expected. Mostly sunny for tomorrow and calm 46. And then we jump right into the 50s on Wednesday and we really don't leave the 50s throughout the rest of the forecast. Mostly sunny on Thursday and 53. Look at Friday with sunshine and 54 expected. Once again, maybe a shower to overnight Saturday into Sunday morning, but the rest of Sunday as we end our weekend looks great with mostly sunny skies, high temperature then of 51. And that's a look at your local weather forecast coming up next tonight's sports report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. I'm Tom from Alpine Air Heating and Cooling. At Alpine Air, we think of ourselves as customer service oriented retailers. When you make an appointment, please visit our store, meet our people, see our shop. We are serious about heating and air conditioning. Carrier and Alpine Air are offering huge factory rebates and financing options for all your needs. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Alpine Air. Call for your free replacement estimate. Heat and air, call Alpine Air. 662-6846. And now, it's a sports update on the NCW Live Channel. And a happy Monday to you. A wild weekend of high school basketball concluded Saturday night at Eastmont High School where the Wildcats hosted the Wenatchee Panthers in a loser, to, loser out winner to state contest. The game saw 12 lead changes, eight ties, came down to the final seconds. I had the call here on the NCW Life Channel. Nate working against Smith, lost the handle. Smith comes out, he'll hoist the shot, it hit the front of the, rim, of the rim, outlet pass to Haberlock. Haberlock down low for Wellborn, Wellborn stops, missed the shot, got his own rebound, put back, good, we're tied! Now to Garrett Long with 28 seconds left in regulation. Off to Camden, he'll work off the pick, spin, Flanagan in front of him, layup, missed it, no good, rebound, Wellborn. Timeout going to be taken by Eastmont with 18.2 seconds left. Inbounds in the backcourt comes into Oscar Calvillo. This is it. Game on the line. Tied at 57. Here we go. 
12 seconds, 10 seconds, probably looking for Isaac Wilmore. Now the drive by Calvillo, kick outside for Smith. Smith on the drive with five. He falls down and a blocking foul called. Two shots coming for Evan Smith, who crashed into the wall, is helped up by two teammates. Two of the biggest free throws of your life for Evan Smith, the 6'1 senior, toes the line. No pressure, really. I mean, you're going to overtime if you miss. First free throw, short, no good. 3.8 seconds left. Wenatchee looking to get the rebound here on a miss. Fans are going nuts at Eastmont High School. Let's watch it. Good. Timeout, Eastmont. So here we go, 3.8 seconds left. Nate Blauman with the ball, inbounding it. He'll go in to Garrett Long with two, with one from half court. Go off the mark, Eastmont wins. And the hero of the moment is Evan Smith. How does that sound? I don't know if I can, that's, it's, it's unbelievable. Tell me how hard it was at the free throw line there. You got 3.8 seconds left. You're tied at least, so no matter what happens, you're not going to lose while you're at the free throw line, but you got a chance to win it. What's that feel like? When I missed the first one, I was kind of I was kind of nervous, but my friend uh, Trey told me this is why I play every morning. That's what I thought about. I closed my eyes and I shot it. You know, it was just a great high school game. Uh, you know, as I was going down the line, I, I, I was talking to Blauman, Long, and Lloyd Hammer because I know some of them are seniors, and it's just sad that somebody had to lose. Uh, I'm glad we won. Don't get me wrong, but it's just sad in some ways. But it was a great high school game. And that it was. Smith finished with nine points, while teammates Trey Haberlock and Isaac Wellborn had 15 and 14, respectively. Garrett Long led Wenatchee with 21 points. Eastmont is seated 15th in the 4A tournament and will face number 10, Olympia, at Tumwater Saturday at 4 o'clock. Eastmont will have to win to advance to Hardwood Classic in the Tacoma Dome. West Valley, by the way, number six seed and faces number three, Mount Si. Saturday, the Rams will advance to Tacoma, win or lose. Well, the Moses Lake girls, despite a district championship and three loss seasons, Season, did not get a top eight seed to the state tournament. As a result, they'll face a loser out regional game Friday against number 16 Decatur in Big Bend Community College that starts at 4 o'clock. Sunnyside drew a 15 seed and will face Bellarmine Prep in the regional on Saturday. Cashmere boys stayed alive to advance to states in a crossover win against Newport 47-31. Nate Phillips led the Bulldogs with 13 points in the low scoring affair. Cashmere earned a number two seed and will advance to the state to a tournament in the Sundome next week. No matter what happens Saturday. Their regional game will be against number seven Kingsway Christian at Wenatchee High School Saturday at four o'clock. Also, OMAC advanced with a 67-62 win over Freeman Saturday and will face number one Seattle Academy in Issaquah Saturday at two o'clock. Wenatchee High will also be the location for the Cashmere Girls Regional Game against Nooksack Valley Saturday. The Bulldogs are the number one seed heading into the tournament and will advance to the Sun Dome no matter what. Their game against number eight Nooksack Valley tips at six o'clock Saturday night. Prior to that, number 10 Okanagan faces number 15 Meridian at 2 o'clock in a must-win game to advance. The Brewster boys beat Kittitas Saturday 84-70 will be the number four seed headed into the state 2B tournament. The Bears regional game will be against number five Life Christian Friday at Wenatchee High School at 6 o'clock. Brewster will advance to state regardless of Friday's outcome. Waterville Mansfield girls earned an 11 seed to the tournament following Saturday's loss to Tri-Cities Prep. The Shockers will face number 14 Northwest Christian Saturday at noon at Wenatchee High School school in the uh, regional. They'll have to win if they want to get to the State B tournament in Spokane next week. Brewster beat Mapton and earned a 13 seed and will face number 12 Colfax Saturday at University High School in Spokane at noon. Riverside Christian beat Pateras Saturday to win the District 6 1B championship. They received a number 4 seed for the regionals and will face number 5 Nacelle Saturday at Eisenhower High School at 4. Riverside Christian girls also advanced to regional tournament with a win over Pateras. They'll be a number 16 seed in the tournament will face a must-win game Friday against number nine Clallam Bay in Mount Tahoma at six o'clock to advance to the state 1B tournament. Most
Fields Lake Christian is a number 12 seed and will face number 13 Tahola Saturday at 2 o'clock. In the 2A tournament, Clarkston and Prosser both advance with Saturday wins while Toppenish claimed the district title with a win over Sela. The Vikings will play a regional game Friday against Renton while Toppenish will advance to state no matter what happens with their regional game with Clarkston on Saturday. Ellensburg girls are district champions with a win over East Valley Saturday. They received a number 2 seed to state and will face WF West Saturday at 2 o'clock in East Valley's regional game will be in Auburn against Renton. The Wenatchee Panther boys swim team took third at the state 4A tournament over the weekend at the Federal Way Aquatic Center. Connor Elwin was a state champion in the 100 backstroke and he also led the Wenatchee 200 mid late relay team to a title along with Christian Cutter, Andreas Broxen, and Ian Walsh. East Mons Evan Vandersloos took third in the 100 best stroke and uh, broke a school record in doing so. Three wrestlers from our region took state championships in Mac Classic 32 in the Tacoma Dome over the weekend. Jonathan Tanguma led five Moses Lake wrestlers to place with a state title at 113 pounds. Maximus Zamora and Cruz Vasquez placed third. Hunter White fifth and Lorenz Thomas eighth. Ace Monte Adrian Vivanco and Max Prazer each took fifth while Wenatchee's Jason Bradley was sixth and Lucas Carranza eighth. Cascade's Hunter Reinhardt was a state champion at 285 pounds. Shalane's Angel Mendoza took eighth. Efreda's Mac Laird took the state title at 195 pounds while teammate Kevin Palayo placed fourth. Quincy's Ruben Vargas took second while the Jackrabbits Oswald Oswaldo Perez was fifth and uh, Mackenzie Realm took eighth. Quincy's Shannon Workinger led a contingent of three girls to place uh, at the state tournament. She took second at 155 pounds. Moses Lake's Bianca Johnson was fourth and Wenatchee's Bella Andra Andrini took seventh. Wenatchee Wild had its seven game winning streak snap Friday in Penticton but will still have home ice advantage in the first round of the playoffs. Penticton beat the Wild Friday 4-1 to one on Bourne scoring the lone uh, goal for Wenatchee. The Wild looked like they're going to win on Saturday. They got out to a 3-0 lead. It remained until the third period. That's when the V's came back and scored three unanswered, sent it into overtime, and they win it in overtime. Now the uh, Wild will take on after finishing fourth in the interior division because Salmon Arm beat uh, Merritt on uh, Saturday or on Sunday to uh, earn the number three seed. So Wenatchee's the number four seed will host Vernon in a first of uh, best of seven series Saturday and Sunday at the Town Toyota Center. The games begin at 7 5. Here's a quick look at the 16 team playoff bracket for the battle for the French Page Cup. Interior division on the right of the screen will recede after the first round. That's a look at sports news and a lot of it. Grant, back to you. Thank you very much, Eric. And finally tonight, an Okanagan County climber has been recognized for writing about his passion. Jeff Childs was honored last week with the American Alpine Club's 2020 Literary Award. Childs lives in Winthrop and he's a longtime contributor to Rock and Ice magazine who's been writing about mountaineering sports for 40 years. His essay collection, Stone Palaces, was published in 2000. Now let's check in with Dan Koontz for a look at what's coming up tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Dan. Thank you very much, Grant. Tomorrow on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley, we had a chance to visit with Leslie Freitag at the Pipus Public Market, and we talked about Nick's Bricks. It's a huge Lego event coming up early in March at the Pipus Public Market, and they're expecting hundreds and hundreds of kids of all ages to play with Legos. It's a cool thing. Nick's Bricks will be the topic tomorrow on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Plus. We'll have news, sports, weather, and everything you're used to to get your Tuesday going. Join me tomorrow live at 7 a.m. Live and local. Wake up in Anchi Valley right here on the NCW Live channel. Grant, back to you. Thank you, Dan. And that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for joining us and have a great night. With TV advertising, what we want to do is more deeply connect with the community. People spot me in different parts around North Central, you know, Costco and Wenatchee say, hey, you're the pizza guy. And so they wouldn't know that if it weren't for the, for the TV commercials we've done. We've been here so long that people already know who we are and what we do, but to have that image flash on their television screen as opposed to just hearing in the radio or seeing in the newspaper. I just love the fact that we can actually put our finger on 
when a customer comes in and says, I saw your ad. It's becoming increasingly difficult in this digital age to know where are your customers listening or watching, because I watch all the different channels that they watch too, like Cooking Channel, History Channel, and so it was wonderful to be able to be on there. I would say that uh, if you want to do business in Wenatchee, then you should connect with the people of Wenatchee, and there's no better way to do that than with NCW Life.